move on uh, to our Greek now because the ministry is pushing for a new law that will compel commercial banks to disburse a percentage of their credit facilities to persons or individuals or entities in the agri sector. The sector minister said the move was informed by complaints from poultry farmers about challenges in accessing credit. Dr. Friyakoto made this revelation whilst responding to claims that government's ban on the importation of maize is to blame for decline, decline growth in the industry. He spoke on PM Express on the Johnny's channel. They are not giving them the credit for them to maintain the heads of poultry that they have. So they are having to cut back by selling part of their, their, their chicken so that whatever money their working capital can buy will be able to feed. And that is the phenomenon going on. And they were thinking that it's a fault of government. But when we went there and sat there and explained to them the whole situation, they understood. At the end of the meeting, there was a very uh, uh, cordial uh, departure between us and them. It understood that it's the banks which have failed them. Because if you're a poultry farmer, professional poultry farmer, you farm 10, 15 years, obviously you have a relationship with the bank. And if your situation has changed, your cost of production has gone up, they should support you. But they are not. They rather give these monies to these women going to China to buy these cheap stuff to come and sell. But the banks to respond to government policies also. But they are not responding this, this, this time. But what is the government policy to encourage banks to give out? To, no, to we don't have any government policy on that. This, this is monetary policy. Interest rates are this and that and that. Yeah, yeah, I've had a meeting with the Indian High Commission in my office today, this morning, for him to give me that legislation so that we can look at it and adapt it to the Ghanaian situation and with the help of the Attorney General, draft something for Cabinet to approve to go to Parliament. So, in essence, what you're saying is that if you, if you pass this through Parliament, mm -hmm. the banks will be compelled to give a portion of their loans yes. for, to, agricultural, for agricultural purposes. Yes. Farmers, processors, and all those in the value chain. Okay. In India, you say it's what, 5%? You no, know, 20%. 20%. Yes. That's significant. Yeah. You're looking, years. At, you're looking at the same range? Well, yeah. I don't know. But definitely the principle is that if persuasion fails, then you use the law. Well, the Chamber of Agribusiness says the improper implementation of the Planting for Food and Jobs program is partly to blame for the hikes in food prices. But the Agric Minister disagrees. Dr. Friyakoto said the program has been perfect. It also depends upon the evacuation and all those things, which will come under the authority. See, at the moment, all these access to the areas, farmers are complaining, oh, the uh, bridge is broken here, or uh, uh, they won't even come because the they, uh, they access will get broken and, and all those things. So in terms of evacuation and all those things, these all add up to the supply situation. You may have stocks which are locked up somewhere in uh, OT region, for instance. Occasionally you hear that yams are there in, in hundreds of thousands of tubers, but there's no access because the little bridge there is broken or something has happened. And, and people can evacuate, you know. But, so we have all these kinds but, but of that, But that's not the main problem, is it? The main problem no. is that we are not producing enough locally now in grapes. Why do you say that? Mm. If, we, if we're not producing enough, there, be, there shouldn't be any stock in the market. There is stock, obviously. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There is stock. Yes. It's, it's whether it's enough why not? For, why for the not? entire yes. needs that we currently have. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's in, enough. It's a, the, it's the, the cost. Farmers. This is what I'm saying. That is the cost of the stock that we are talking about, the price, which has gone beyond their normal levels because of the, the, what is happening in the world, mm. okay? So it's a price, it's not, that physically, there, there's, as I'm saying, I was going out there thinking that, oh, I wouldn't see any stock. Well, well let's speak to an economist and a finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Lord Mensah. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your time on joining us, Prime. So, What's your take on this move by the Greek ministry, given you know, the fact that we have a free market and the consideration of risk by the banks in giving or advancing credit? Yeah, I think um, the Greek minister was proposing an Indian uh, model, which yeah. uh, they want to adapt in our environment. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand that you know, the banks you know, normally mimic their lending depending on where they took their money from. So um, where they are picking their deposit from will determine where they lend to. So 
if the government will lend to them at a certain threshold and possibly give them that kind of a policy line to ensure that they lend to the big sector, that is fine. But then we should understand that, you know, uh, the banks will always lend to areas of the economy that are doing very well. And so if the banks are not responding to agriculture policies, then effectively it tells you that indeed they don't trust their sector. And as a result of that, they are not prepared to lend to the sector. The banks have expertise to explore, I mean, the grounds to know which sectors of the economy that are doing well and restructure their loans to that, in that regard. Mm -hmm. so effectively, if, I mean, the policy that he's talking about, probably it could be that the Indian government has a percentage that they lend to the banks and effectively force them to lend to the agri sector. Until we have that, I don't think um, any law can force, you know, um, the, the, the banks to lend to the agri sector after this universal banking law. Let's mm -hmm. take our minds back in the years. I mean, ADB, you know, stands for Agri Development Bank. Um, what's their loan structure when it comes to, you know, their, their, their lending? You can go into details and realize that they themselves are not lending to the agri sector. So effectively, it has to do with, you know, sectors of the economy that are doing well. And I believe that the planting for food and jobs should have been a case study to, to give, you know, the, the headlights. Um, the agri sector is indeed a profitable area for which the banks will whet the appetite of the banks to put their money in there. But I don't think, uh, as it stands now, uh, they have any, any baseline to lend to the sector. If this goes through, given the current conditions, what are likely to be the implications, especially for the banking sector and perhaps the economy at large? Well, what will happen is that people will start keeping their money. I mean, if it happens, that is a policy. Because uh, the Ghanaians, Ghanaians themselves really don't really trust the agri sector. I mean, when monies are being channeled in that sector. And we can count the possible losses. And no depositor will lend money to, to, for a bank to lend to a sector that you know, um, they, not, they don't have confidence in. So possibly people will start sleeping on their monies. And um, we'll have a system where people will not like to you know, um, send their monies to the bank. But then in the end, uh, um, we, we're going to have a struggle financial system. Very well. Thank you so much for your time. That's our Professor Lord Mensah. He's an economist and a finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. Thank <laughs> you.